ustedes saben así, potencias, exponentes y logaritmos. Funciones de potencia, o potenciales que se llaman, funciones potenciales. Here you can make your own power function of the form y equals x to the a. Right now, a is equal to 1, so this function is y equals x, a straight line. Let's change a using the slider bar down here, and let's make it 2. So now we have y equals x squared, which is a quadratic function. Now let's change a and make it negative. Let's make it minus 1. In general, y equals x to the minus a power is the same thing as 1 over x to the positive a power. So this function is x to the minus 1, which is the same thing as 1 over x to the first power, or 1 over x. Now let's make a 0.5. Okay. So this function is y equals x to the 0, 0.5, which is the same thing as the square root of x. For which power is a? Does the power function turn out to be concave down? Bien. Entonces, ahorita mostró varias funciones en las cuales la variable independiente, o la abscisa x, es elevada a diferentes valores de potencia. Números eh, positivos y números negativos. Números enteros y números racionales. Racionales, racionales. Y vimos que dependiendo de la potencia, del tipo de número en la potencia, varía la forma en la función. Nos pregunta cuándo la función de potencia, en qué casos la función de potencia es cóncava abajo. Cuando A o la potencia es mayor que, es mayor que 1, cuando A es menor que 1 pero mayor que 0, cuando a es menor que 0 pero mayor que menos 1, ya, eh, ok, o cuando a es menor que menos 1. ¿En qué casos? La función es cóncava abajo. Con la 3, ¿no? A ver, alguien dijo la primera, alguien dijo la 3 y alguien dijo la última. Ok, so let's look at some of the choices here. The first choice is when a is greater than 1. So let's set a to a value that's greater than 1. This curve is smiling. It's concave up. So this is not the answer. When a is between 0 and 1, the curve is now concave down. It's frowning. So this looks like it's the answer. If we set a to a value that's between minus 1 and 0, like here, it's smiling again. So this is not the answer. And if we set a to a value that's less than negative 1, it's still smiling. So this is also not the answer. Okay. Great. Now let's just look at positive powers, which is when the exponent a is greater than 0. For positive powers, when you put really big values of x into the function, what values of y do you get out? Potencias positivas, palabras mayores que cero, ¿qué sucede a y? ¿Qué sucede con y cuando x se hace muy grande? Y se hace cercana a cero, y se hace infinitamente negativa, o y se hace muy grande. Y se hace muy grande. Conforme aumenta el valor de x, aumenta el valor de y. Great. Now let's set a to be a negative value, like this. So now what happens to the function as x gets really big? Para potencias negativas, en palabras, a menor que cero, la potencia menor que cero, ¿qué le sucede a y cuando x se hace muy grande? ¿Qué sucede con el valor de y? Tiende a cero, pero sin llegar. Bueno, tiende a cero. Goes to zero. Ok, so let's look at these negative values of A. 
What happens as x gets really close to zero, but stays positive? So we're looking at values of x that are closer and closer to zero on the positive side. What happens to the function? Here we'll discuss the rules for multiplying and dividing powers with the same base. So suppose you have x cubed and x to the fifth. Which of the following choices is the product of these two quantities? ¿Cuál de las siguientes estas es igual a x al cubo por x a la quinta? x a la ocho. ¿Están todos de acuerdo? ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué se suma? A ver, me, me gusta la explicación que da aquí, porque entonces ya no es por dos más de p. <laughs> let's expand what's written here. First, let's look at x cubed, which we know is x times x times x. Next, we're going to look at x to the fifth, which is x times x times x times x times x. And we're multiplying these together. So this is 8x's, which is x to the 8. Aquí se demuestra que esto es cierto, no nada más porque me lo he hecho por sobre la secundaria. Es algo que no es por forma de C. Right. Let's quickly see how you got that. X cubed is X times X times X. And X to the fifth is five X's all multiplied by each other. Their product is all five plus three, or eight X's multiplied together. So that's X to the eighth. Next question. In general, what is the product of X to the A and X to the B? Right. It's X to the A plus B. Now let's turn our attention to division. What's X to the sixth divided by X squared? In the numerator, we have six x's, so we're multiplying by x six times. In the denominator, we have x squared, or x times x. We can cancel out two of the x's from the numerator and the denominator, and this leaves us with just four in the numerator. And that's equal to x to the fourth. Right. Yo prefiero entenderlo como el resultado de un número racional que es el cociente o la relación entre esos dos números enteros. Exactly. Because x to the sixth is six x's multiplied together, and x squared is x times x. The two x's in the denominator cancel out two of the x's in the numerator. That leaves x times x times x times x, or x to the fourth. So in general, what is x to the a divided by x to the b? Yes, it's x to the a minus b. To summarize, you found that x to the a times x to the b is x to the a plus b, and x to the a divided by x to the b is x to the a minus b. So in general, when you multiply two powers with the same base, 
x of these examples, you can add their exponents. And when you divide powers with the same base, you can subtract their exponents. Let's talk about exponential functions. Previously, we talked about powers, which were functions of the form y equals x to the a, where a is a constant number. Now let's talk about exponentials. To make an exponential function, let's switch the a and the x so that the a is now raised to the x power. And that's an exponential. It's a function in which a constant number is raised to the power of a variable like the x here. Let's also multiply this function by a constant, capital A. And let's also replace the little a with a b. We'll use b here because it represents the base of the exponential function. Great. Next, we'll graph some exponential functions. Now here's a graph of an exponential function that you can change. You can drag this slider here to change the a, the coefficient in front of the exponential. And you can change b, the base of the exponential, by dragging this slider. So the question here is, let's say that b is greater than 1 and a is positive, it's bigger than 0. As x gets really, really big, what happens to this function? Great. Now let's keep this coefficient a as positive, but let's change the base b so that it's less than 1. So here's a value of b that's less than 1. Now what happens as x gets really, really big? Okay, last question. Here we want to know for which values of a and b will this exponential function be concave down. Right now it's concave up. It's smiling. There we go. This is a concave up function. But how can you change a and b so that the function is concave down or frowning?
Right. Let's talk about rules for combining exponential functions. Here are two exponential functions, 2 to the x and 3 to the x. What's their product? First, we can rewrite 2 to the x as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, etc. And 3 to the x as 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, etc. And we've written x2s and x3s here. In this case, we have 5 2s and 5 3s. But in general, you would have x of them. 2 to the x times 3 to the x is the product of all these numbers. Let's combine the 2s and the 3s vertically in pairs. The product of each 2 and 3 is 6. So now we have x6s all multiplied by each other. So what is another way to write 2 to the x times 3 to the x. Here we've written out 5 sixes. That's 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. That's equal to 6 to the fifth. In general, if you have x of them instead of 5 of them, that'll be 6 to the x. Right, it's 6 to the x. Next question. Let's replace the 2 and the 3 with variables a and b. Using what you just saw with multiplying 2 to the x and 3 to the x, what is the product of a to the x and b to the x? Let's expand a to the x and b to the x. I'm going to write a a few times, but there are actually x of them. I've only done it three times here. I can do the same for b. Now we can multiply these pairwise. So here we end up with a b times a b times a b and so on again i've only done three of them but there are actually x of them so this leaves us with a b x times which is a b to the x right it's the product a b then raised to the x power last question what happens if we replace the multiplication with division in other words, what is a to the x divided by b to the x? Again, let's write out a to the x and b to the x. In the numerator, we have a x times, here I'm only doing it three times, and in the denominator, we have b the same number of times. If we look at these by pairs, we'll notice that this is equal to a over b times a over b times a over b, and so on x times. This leaves us with a over b all to the x power. No se trata de memorizar las reglas, se trata de entenderlas. Porque entonces cuando uno las, uno las usa, ya intuye el resultado que va a salir. Uno ya predice al menos correctamente qué debe, cuál debe ser el resultado final. De otra manera, solamente las memorizamos y además la memoria falla, la memoria falla, yo pues traigo mi memoria USB, a mí falla. <risa> Si uno ya intuye cuál debe ser el resultado, uno puede darse cuenta si ya se, si se equivocó. Y entonces uno corrige. Si uno queda con la confianza de que está en el resultado correcto y vive en el error. Exactly. So here are the rules for multiplying exponents raised to the same power. a to the x times b to the x equals a b to the x, and a to the x over b to the x equals a over b, then raised to the x. El número E. ¿Eh? ¿Qué es eso? The number E. 
Here we'll talk about Euler's number, named after the mathematician Leonard Euler. Euler's number is abbreviated as the letter E. E is a very common number in math and science, about as common as the number pi. And so in math or science, if you see a lowercase e, it almost always refers to Euler's number. E is equal to approximately 2.718281828459045, and so on. It's usually good enough to remember that E is approximately 2.718281828. E has several important properties. One of them is that it's equal to 1 plus 1 over 1 factorial, plus 1 over 2 factorial, plus 1 over 3 factorial, plus 1 over 4 factorial, and so on. As you keep adding the 1 over factorial terms, this sum approaches, or converges, to E. What's the sum of the terms that we've listed here? Sin embargo, es un número cercano a cero, ¿no? 
the Sephardi Institute. Right. The terms that we've listed here add up to about 2.71805, pretty close to the value we gave here. If we had added more terms to this expression, we would get a more accurate result for E. Another property of E is that if we consider the expression 1 plus 1 over n all raised to the nth power, and we make n really, really big, this expression also approaches E. What's the value of this expression when n equals 100? Uh, nos está poniendo esto como una equivalencia al, número, al término de derecho de esta igualdad. ¿Qué sucede con el, número, con el resultado cuando n es muy grande? Por ejemplo, nos preguntó igual a 100. Sí, ya es un número grande. 2.7048. Right, and if we set n equal to a million, then 1 plus 1 over a million, all raised to the millionth power, is 2.71828047, very close to our expression for e. Choosing even bigger values for n would give us closer approximations for e. This fact about E has important applications to banking and finance. And E is commonly used as the base in exponential functions. Often, when functions are written as b to the x, you'll see them written with E in the base instead of any other number. So suppose b is equal to e to the k. k is the power to which you have to raise e, so that b equals e to the k. Then which of the following is an expression for y? Bien, entonces, a este número al que se eleva un, que es más, que se eleva a una potencia, en este caso a la potencia X, se le conoce como base. Cualquier número elevado a una potencia es la base de ese número potencial. En este caso sería un número exponencial porque la variable es la potencia. Bien. A veces la base es la variable, en el caso de las funciones potenciales. En el caso de las funciones exponenciales, Eh, es la base la que es elevada a un número variable eh, la base se puede obtener a partir de elevar por ejemplo E a la potencia K si Y es igual a B a la K y B es igual a E a la K entonces ¿cuál de los siguientes de las siguientes es una expresión válida para Y? para este de acá O sea, B es igual a esto, Y es igual a esto. ¿A qué es igual Y sabiendo que B es igual a Y a la K? La tercera. ¿La tercera? Sí. Lo que hago es sustituyo esto, aquí me queda E a la K por X. Right. Y equals e to the k to the x, which equals e to the kx. So by choosing the right value for k, any exponential function can be rewritten with e as its base. Next, we'll take a closer look at functions of the form e to the kx. Bien, vamos a So here's a graph of y equals e to the x. And you can change the coefficients here in front of the e and in front of the x by dragging these two sliders down here, A and K. Okay, so if X gets really, really, really big, which of the following is true about what happens to this function? Bien, entonces aquí tenemos uh, un número, en este caso el número E sería la base, que a su vez, a su vez está multiplicado por un coeficiente, el número que se multiplica o cualquier variable es el coeficiente elevado a una potencia x que a su vez está multiplicada por otro número constante que sería el coeficiente de esta variable. Entonces, estos son coeficientes y estos son números variables, aunque e tiene un valor específico. Es una función finalmente exponencial porque la, el coeficiente, la base perdón, está elevada a un número variable. 
Cuando X se hace muy grande, ¿cuál de las siguientes afirmaciones son válidas para A veces E a la K veces X? Si A es positivo, la función eh, es muy grande para cualquier K. Si K es positivo, eh, entonces es, eh, se acerca a cero para cualquier valor de A. Si A, es, si a y K son positivas, entonces se hace muy grande. O si A y K son negativas, entonces se acerca a cero. La tercera. La tercera nada más. La tercera. Eh, no, la primera. La primera. ¿Qué es pues si mejor jugamos con los coeficientes que tenemos aquí abajo? Y vamos probando para cada una de las cuatro opciones. Si A es positivo, ¿ahí está positivo? Sí, allá arriba. Sí, sí, sí. Y eh, ¿qué sucede con la variable? Se hace grande para cualquier valor de K. A es positivo, voy a cambiar el valor de K. Aquí es positivo. Aumenta, aumenta Y aquí la hago negativa se acerca a cero no, no se hace negativo si K es positiva es positiva o sea, se hace se acerca a cero para cualquiera Si A y K son positivas, que son positivas ambas, la función se hace muy grande. ¿Sí? Ahí está. Entonces, parece que esté cierta. Y si A y K son negativas, las dos son negativas, menos 3.9, menos 1.8. ¿Qué sucede con la función? Se acerca a cero. Parece que sean las válidas. ¿Sí? Lo hicimos experimentando. Fue un experimento matemático. Nicely done. Now which of the following are true about exponential functions when x gets really negative? Ahora cuando se hace negativa. ¿Qué sucede? A ver, si a es positiva, a esta positiva eh, se acerca a se hace grande para cualquier valor de K aquí es K es positiva por lo que pasa se hace negativa cambia ¿no? Después que se... si K es positiva K es positiva se acerca a cero para cualquier A ¿se acerca a cero? sí, sí. Cuando, conforme la, hacia la punta de la flecha sí, entonces esta parece que sí es cierta si A y K son positivas ahí son positivas se hace muy grande si A y K son negativas se acerca a cero no ¿qué pasa? se hace negativa no se acerca a cero si se acercaba a cero tenía que venir para acá el valor de Y pero en realidad el valor de Y conforme se hace más negativo X el valor de Y se hace más negativo entonces la única válida es esta de aquí bien vamos ok, last question just to see if you were paying attention suppose you have a function Y equals A to the X is it possible to rewrite this function as y equals e to the kx for some value of k? A ver, si cualquier función de forma y igual a a a la x puede cualquier función de esa forma escribirse también como e a la kx ¿cierto o pasa? Sí Si le pusieron atención Ok, excelente Vamos a ver si Logaritmos ¿Qué es eso? Logaritmos Y 
biólogo sin logaritmo no es biólogo. Here we'll introduce logarithms. Logarithms are closely related to exponential functions. But instead of using the word logarithm, you'll usually see it shortened to just log. Let's get straight to an example. This expression is read as the log of 8 base 2, or alternatively, as the log base 2 of 8. Either way, this number over here, the 2, is called the base. So what is the log of 8 base 2? Logarithms are really exponentials, but just rearranged. Asking what the log of 8 base 2 is, is the same thing as asking to what power you need to raise to so that it equals 8. So what power is it? Bien. Right, it's 3, since 2 to the third power equals 8. That means that the log of 8 base 2 is 3. Let's leave that equation up there. Next question. What's another way to write this equation? The log of x base b equals y. Yes, this logarithmic equation means the same thing as b to the y equals x. Next, we'll see what log functions look like for different values of b. Okay, here you can graph your own log function, and you can see which function it is right up here. This is the function y equals 1 times the log base 2 of x, and you can change the coefficient and the base of the log by dragging these sliders down here. Here's the coefficient, a, and here's the base, b. Okay, so if a is positive and b is bigger than 1, what happens to the log function as x gets really, really big? Bien. Entonces, ¿qué sucede con esta función cuando x se hace muy grande? Dime infinito. Se acerca a 0, se acerca a 1, se acerca a tiende a menos infinito o a más infinito. ¿Tú dijiste que a más infinito? Sí. Aunque es muy lento, finalmente, el valor de y va aumentando conforme aumenta el valor de x. Great. So now if you play with these sliders, a and b, you'll see something a little unusual, which is that logarithms are always defined for positive x, so you'll always see the function defined for positive x, but you won't see any curve over here when x is less than zero. So why aren't logarithms defined for x less than zero? Okay. 
no existiría. El pH, ¿cuál es la definición que nos aprendemos hasta de memoria? Tienes su razón de ser. Eh, Un detalle entre la matemática y la matemática aplicada, por ejemplo, a biología, es que tiene que ayudarnos a describir cosas que sí existen o que sí pueden existir biológicamente. Los seres vivos están hechos por moléculas y las moléculas por átomos. ¿Qué significa esta H signo positivo, elevada a la X si no es elevada? Es un signo positivo, que algo, un, algún sentido tiene, entre dos corchetes. ¿Qué significa? Esto significa concentración de H. Porque puede ser otra cosa. De hecho, podríamos hablar de P. NA. Y alguien dice, no profesor, no quiero probar. Uh, NA no. No, sodio. pH, ¿cómo lo leen esto? ¿Qué significa pH? Potencial de hidrógeno. Potencial de hidrógeno. ¿Qué significa esto? Potencial de sodio. ¿Cómo puedo yo calcular el potencial de sodio? Cualquier cosa que sea eso. Sin embargo, ¿qué sucede si que lo que yo tengo son, por ejemplo, puedo preparar esto fácilmente con cloruro de sodio, le pongo una cantidad de cloruro de sodio en un volumen conocido, masa entre volumen es concentración, ¿no? masa entre volumen es igual a concentración. Entonces yo puedo calcular esto, esta desconcentración, por cierto, concentración de unidades molares, en M mayúscula, ¿correcto? Entonces yo puedo calcular la concentración molar, por ejemplo, del cloruro de sodio, eh, por cierto, tengo que medir en unidades molares, en moles, en moles, no de olla, en sodio, ¿sí? este, sería moles de sodio. En, por ejemplo, un litro. Y esto, si lo que tengo es una mol, sería una mol de sodio, un litro lo que tengo es una mol. Pero si lo que tengo no es una mol, sino que lo que tengo es 0.1 moles. Moles. Y eso se abrevia así como mol. En un litro, lo que tengo es, es 0.1 molar. Ahora hagamos todo con hidrógeno para poder calcular el pH o el potencial de hidrógeno, que esto es una medida de qué? Así ves, que es un fenómeno químico. Esto sería tal vez alcalinidad. Los hidrobiólogos en cuerpos de agua suelen medir la concentración de sodio para poder medir la alcalinidad. El sodio es un estado alcalino. Entonces, la acidez se debe al hidrógeno, la alcalinidad se debe al sodio por ejemplo. Eh, ¿Qué pasa si lo que tengo yo es una mol, pero no de sodio, sino de una mol de, de uno molar de ácido clorhídrico o de ácidos de hidrógenos positivos? Esto, ¿cuál sería el pH? ¿Cuál es el logaritmo de punto uno? Calculen sus calculadoras. Lo válido de punto uno, que sería un décimo de mol en el litro. ¿Cuánto resultó? ¿Cuánto? Menos uno. Menos uno. Sí. Menos uno. Verifique a través de la fórmula del logaritmo. El logaritmo es la base 10. 1. 1. Entonces, si sí está bien, la calculadora sí lo hizo bien. Eh, Tiene sentido, pues aquí el resultado lo voy a poner en rojo, 
el pH sería igual a menos 1. Pero el pH es la concentración, me habla de la concentración de, 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 átomos, de, 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 de átomos, en este caso de hidrógeno. Me estaría diciendo como algo, algo raro. Por eso es que definimos, además hay otra razón fisicoquímica que la vamos a ver después, Habla, siguiendo hablando de los de logaritmos. Si lo multiplico por menos uno, si esto lo multiplico por menos uno, me transforma en la escala de pH que normalmente conozco, que va de 1 a 13. En positivo. No, porque el 14, bueno, el 0 y el 14, uno ahí diría la escala va de 0 a 14. Pero, pero si lo aplican aquí van a obtener números raros. Entonces, y además en la realidad, en el número raro es para la realidad. ¿Sí? Un pH, ¿Cuánto sería el pH de 0? Bueno, eh, más bien, el, apliquen esto a pH 0. Va a ser 10 a la 0. Sale algo raro. ¿Sí? Entonces, estaríamos hablando de una concentración infinita de átomos de, 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 átomos de hidrógeno, de iones de hidrógeno. Y en el caso del pH 14, estaríamos hablando de una concentración infinita de la contraparte que son los átomos de los iones hidroxilo. No existen las concentraciones infinitas en la vida. Por eso que en la práctica manejamos el pH como válido de 1 a 3. Aunque teóricamente, bueno, matemáticamente, la ecuación, la escala va de 0 a 14. Pero no es factible que exista el pH 0. La realidad es, es imposible, no puede suceder, aunque matemáticamente lo sugiera. Es como el modelo matemático del universo de Claudio Ptolomeo. ¿Sí? Decía que la Tierra estaba en el centro, el Sol, la Luna y las estrellas se mueven alrededor de la Tierra. Y además había esferas de cristal y no sé cuántas cosas. Y no, cuando se enviaron las naves al, a, a los planetas, nadie escuchó crash. Entonces, la evidencia material muestra la validez del modelo matemático. Entonces, no se preocupe por calcular pH de 0 o de 14. No existe ninguna. Ok, just to see if you were paying attention before. What's an equivalent way to write that the log of x base b equals y? Bien, ¿cuál sería una forma equivalente de escribir? logaritmo base b de x igual a y cuál de estas cuatro es equivalente a esta la... no contesten de bote pronto la cuarta la cuarta no si la tercera no busques solo juras no te más ganas Good. Now let's look at some specific examples. First up, what is the log of b base b? Ahora, ¿cuál es el logaritmo base b de b? Para cualquier valor de b. Jueguen con b. Ah, no, a ver, indica un poner un número. Uno. ¿Cuál es el valor? Here we want to raise b to some power to get b. That is, b to the y equals b. So what do we have to set y to be? Well, the solution here is y equals 1. b to the 1 equals b. Yes, the log of b base b equals 1, since b to the first power equals b. Now, what is the log of 1 base b? Ahora es el logaritmo base b de 1. Correcto. Again, we need to raise b to some power, let's call it y, to get 1. The only way to do this is to set y equal to 0. That is, 
we're saying that b to the 0 is equal to 1. Right. It's 0, since b to the 0, like any number to the 0, equals 1. Let's finish off with a few details about writing logarithms. As with trig functions, you'll often see logs written without the parentheses, like this. Sometimes, you'll also see log written without a base. In this case, the default base is 10. So if the base is 10, what's log 1,000? This time, we need to raise 10 to some power, let's call it y, to get 1,000. How many times do we have to multiply 10 to get 1,000? Well, 10 squared is 100. And 10 cubed is 1,000. So it looks like the y that we want is 3. Yes, it's 3 since 10 to the third equals 1,000. We just said that log x, written without a base, means the same thing as the log of x base 10. One other expression you'll commonly see is ln of x, sometimes pronounced as the lin of x. Lin is short for natural log, so you can also read this as the natural log of x. Lin of x is the same thing as the log of x base e, which is Euler's number, equal to approximately 2.71828. Here we'll come up with formulas for finding the log of products and quotients of numbers. It turns out that the log of x times y equals the log of x plus the log of y for any values of x and y. And the log of x divided by y equals the log of x minus the log of y. Here we'll prove that these identities are true for any base. Let's start off with the log of x and the log of y, both in base b. Let's say log x is equal to a number m, and that log y equals another number n. Which of the following is a way to write these same equations in exponential form? Bien. ¿Cuál de las siguientes ecuaciones son equivalentes a las ecuaciones logarítmicas de acá? ¿Cuáles de estas son equivalentes a qué? La primera. La primera opción. Correcto. Right. Saying that the log of x base b equals m is the same thing as saying that b to the m equals x. And similarly, log y base b equals n is the same thing as saying that b to the n equals y. Let's hold on to the log equations, but for now, we'll use the exponential versions of the equations. If b to the n equals x and b to the n equals y, which of the following equations must also be true? Dado que b a la m es igual a x y b a la n es igual a y, ¿cuál de las siguientes ecuaciones es cierta? El producto de x, y sería igual a b a la m más b, la, la sumatoria de estas dos. O la, el producto sería igual a la diferencia, o sería igual al producto, o sería igual al cociente. La tercera. La tercera. 
All four of these choices are asking us what happens when we multiply x and y. So let's do that. We have x, y here. Now we know that x is equal to b to the n, so let's write that down. And we're going to multiply that by y, which is b to the n over here. Yes, so x, y equals b to the m times b to the n. And what's another way to write what's on the right-hand side of this equation? Exactly. So x, y equals b to the m plus n. Now, how can we write this exponential equation back in logarithmic form? Remember that when we're asking for the log base b of some number a, that's the same as asking how many times do we have to multiply b to get a. So let's take a look at this and rewrite it in that form. We end up with the log base b of this expression over here, xy, equals the exponent, which is m plus n. Right, the log base b of xy equals m plus n. What are m and n? We defined them before as being the logs of x and y. Let's plug in log x for m and log y for n. Since this result is true for any base b, you'll often see this identity written without the bases. It works for all of them. Okay. Now let's backtrack to the equivalent logarithmic and exponential equations we had earlier. Instead of multiplying x and y, this time let's divide them. So x over y equals b to the m over b to the n. What's another way to write the right-hand side of this equation? <laughs> exactly. It's b to the m minus n. Okay, last question. How can you write this exponential equation in logarithmic form? Correct. The exponential equation is equivalent to log x over y base b equals m minus n. Once again, let's plug in log x for n and log y for n. And since this equation is true for any base b, let's ignore the bases. And we're done. Congrats. You've just proven that the log of a product turns into the sum of the logs, while the log of a quotient turns into the difference of the logs. el logaritmo de x a la n. Simplifying the log of a power. Suppose you want to take the log of a power, like x raised to the nth power. The way to simplify this expression is to take the exponent out of the log. The log of x to the n equals n times the log of x, which we'll prove here. Also note that we didn't write which base this logarithm is in because this identity is true for all bases. First, let's recall the log addition identity. Which of the following is equal to the log of x times y? Right. The log of x times y equals the log of x plus the log of y. 
try using the log addition identity to find another way to write the log of x squared. Ahora, ¿cuál sería entonces la expresión para el logaritmo de Schultz cuadrado? Segunda. Exactly. Let's see how you got that. X squared equals x times x. So if we substitute x in for y in the identity, then we get the log of x times x equals log x plus log x. Log x plus log x is 2 log x. So the log of x squared equals 2 log x. Next question. Which of the following is another way to write the log of x cubed? ¿Cuál sería entonces para el logaritmo de x cúbica? Aquí ya. La primera. La tercera. Right. To get that, you use the log addition identity again. And we can rewrite x cubed as x times x squared. Now let's plug in x squared for y in the log addition identity. Over here, we have log x squared, which we earlier found is equal to 2 log x. So let's plug that in. Log x plus 2 log x equals 3 log x. So log of x squared equals 2 log x, and log of x cubed equals 3 log x. Try using the log addition identity to find the log of x to the fourth. Exactly right. The log of x to the fourth equals 4 log x. In general, which of the following do you think is a simplification of the log of x to the n? La regla la regla no es que la regla sea porque no, fue, no la votaron los diputados no, esta tiene su argumento matemático sería bueno que las leyes que votan los diputados se demostraran así ¿no? right again the log of x to the n always equals n times the log of x to summarize, in this tutorial, we use the log addition identity to illustrate how to simplify the log of a power, that the log of x to the n equals n times the log of x. This tutorial will cover changing bases in logarithms. Here's your typical logarithm, the log of x base b. We'll show here that this log is equal to a fraction containing two other logs. The x will show up in the numerator, and the b will be in the denominator. The log of x base b equals the log of x over the log of b, both in another base, c. This identity is true for any value of c. So if you have a log in base b, this identity allows you to switch over to any other base you want, represented here as C. Now let's prove this identity. In other words, given the numbers X, B, and C, let's prove that this equation is true. First, let's say that the log of X base C equals the number M, and that the log of B base C equals N. What's an equivalent way to write these equations? Right. The first one is the same thing as saying c to the n equals x, and the second one says that c to the n equals b. So now, given these two equations here, which of the following is a correct relation between x and b? ¿Cuál es 
مثلا some expression involving x equal to some expression involving b. Well, they're both equal to c to some power, but not quite, but we can change that. Let's start with c to the m equals x. Let's raise that to the nth power. This gives us c to the mn equals x to the n. Now we can look at the second equation, c to the n equals b. Let's raise both sides of this to the nth power. So we have c to the n times m equals b to the n. Notice that these two things are now equal. So we can say x to the n equals b to the n. Now that we know that x to the n equals b to the m, we can solve this for x by raising both sides to the 1 over n power. That is, x to the n, all to the 1 over n power, is equal to b to the m to the same power. The left side of this simply becomes x. And the right side of this becomes b to the m divided by n. Okay. Right. Now let's see how you got that. We can raise both sides of the top equation to the nth power, and both sides of the bottom equation to the nth power. And over here, n times m is the same as m times n. Now we see that both x to the n and b to the m equal c to the mn, so they're equal to each other. And finally, we can raise both sides to the power of 1 over n, so that x equals b to the m over n. At this point, we'll take the log base b of both sides. How can we simplify the right-hand side of this expression? ¿Cómo simplificamos el lado derecho? Here, we have the log of b to some power, m over n here. We know from one of the identities that we can pull that out, and we'll end up with m over n times the log base b of b. But what's the log of b base b? Well, that's equal to 1. So this goes away, and we end up with just m over n. Exactly. The log base b of b to some power is equal to that power, m over n in this case. Now we can plug in the values of m and n from our two logarithmic equations up here. And we see that, sure enough, the log of x in base b equals the log of x over the log of b in another base, c. So in general, if you want to switch bases of logarithms, take the log of the same number, divide it by the log of the base, and use any new base you want. In this tutorial, we'll look at raising a number to a power that's a logarithm with the same base. First, let's try a numerical example. Using your calculator, Start with the number 3 and raise it to the power of log 7 base 3. What do you get?
ya no sé, tres a la a eso. ¿Ah? El primer auto, ¿cuál fue? 0.01 No, no es ¿Eh? Acá 5.31 No, tampoco ¿Eh? A ver, ¿cuál es el logaritmo base 3 de 7? ¿Sí? El logaritmo base 3. 3.33. No, no, porque se pasa bien. ¿A qué número tengo que elevar la base para obtener este? Háganlo así. The log base 3 of 7 is not something we can do in a calculator, but we can use an identity to rewrite the log base 3 of 7 as the log of 7 divided by the log of 3. And now these are both base 10, which our calculator can do. Let's try plugging them in and see what comes out. So the log of 7 divided by the log of 3 es no, no, no. igual a 1.7712. So this is 1.7712. And the question is asking us what 3 raised to the power of that is equal to. So what's 3 raised to the 1.7712? Well, let's look at our calculator again. 3 raised to the 1.7712 is equal to something that's basically 7. So that's our answer. The answer turned out to be 7. Is it a coincidence that 7 is the same number from the logarithm? It's no coincidence. Let's see why. First off, can you remember another way to write the equation log x base b equals y? ¿Cuál es la otra forma de expresar esto? Ya lo habíamos visto hace rato. Right. Log of x base b equals y means the same thing as taking b, raising it to the y power, and getting x. Using these two equivalent ways of writing logs and exponentials, let's start with the equation log x base b equals log x base b. Saying something equals itself isn't too exciting, is it? But what's another way to write this equation? That's exactly right. Let's see how you got that. Just like with these two equations up here, to rewrite the logarithm equation, we can take the base b, raise it to the power of what's on this side of the equation, which is log x base b, and that must equal what's inside the parentheses of the log on this side, which is x. And so we've proven another log identity. For any numbers b and x, b raised to the log x base b equals x. Bonito. Bonito. Bien. Ok. Con esto terminamos el tema de hoy. Gracias a que nos aburrido. Y en un tiempo muy bueno. Nos vemos la próxima clase para ver composiciones y relaciones de funciones. Vale la pena que de aquí a que nos vean la provincia el día en que nos hacemos los muertos. Este, tengo una revisión en sus libros de ecología, de bioquímica. ¿Dónde aparece en función de los Porque va a ser muy útil que la hacemos más adelante. Por hoy terminamos. Por favor, apete el botón rojo.